Wow, that was the second one. See how exciting it is when we're like having fun in the studio, and then all of a sudden it just we're live. <sighs> I can't believe that was. Where's the, the good one? morning? You good guys must have started it good before no, I got here. Not, not true. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Lockpod, Belgium Stop Rated Podcast, and we're free of charge, saving you hundreds of dollars, at least six bucks a month, yeah, <laughs> seventy seventy two dollars a year. You know that adds up after a decade or so. Yeah. You could listen hundreds to us, of dollars. You could listen to people that. Geico. Don't know. So hold it. About if you listen to Lockpod for a decade, you'll okay. save close to a thousand dollars. Does wild. that mean I'm going to be sitting in this minute. chair for a decade? What's that, Lens? Does John that just, mean I'm going to sit in this chair? John for just a walked out. I think <laughs> you do. You do. <laughs> I would rather give someone a thousand dollars than sit listen to Lockpod for a decade. <laughs> You just listen to us for a decade. And I have a way I could show you. You could save seven hundred twenty dollars. Season fifty two, episode eight. <laughs> <laughs> just sounds like I think everybody. You just made yourself a thousand dollars. You may you recall are, in season in season you're like, four. You're welcome. <laughs> the world is burning. We're like doing this lock by yeah, episode. Right. You're welcome, everybody. You season four, $1, episode $1. twenty. Tom you're said you save me. a thousand. You're you mocking finally, me. No, I'm not. I just. <laughs> It's a I, long I, time I just now. gave everybody that listens to our show a, t- a way to save one thousand dollars, and you guys are laughing. By doing no, nothing. I just can't believe I'd be sitting here. In I wish years. it was a savings over a shorter period of time. That's all I'm. There saying. you go. <laughs> it is what it is. You want yeah. a you want a higher rate of return, don't you, John? Yeah. <laughs> Your money. Oh, well, you know me. I just want somebody to hand me money. That's all. Yeah, Lindsay's back. Look at that. Yeah, Lindsay's Notorious back. Notorious LMP in the house. Welcome back. Whoop whoop. How's it going? You are hating <laughs> life? Uh, I'm exhausted. <laughs> one, two. My allergies are driving me. Up the wall today. Yeah. So I got a, these from you. Oh. School and everything going on. Obviously. Oh yes, everything's great. I'm gonna be on the dean's list this semester. Oh, you look really? at you, it's smarty, like smarty it. pants. Nice. There's like three tests in my way between now and the end of the semester, and I don't predict that they're gonna screw me up. Okay. Well, that's enough of Lindsay. Let's move on. Wow. <laughs> I want to ask her about her sweatshirt. <laughs> oh, okay. What's up? Oh yeah, we were oh, having yeah. a discussion without you today. Really? Can you uh, this stand is, up a little? Okay. This right, is my louder than a bomb sweatshirt, and I guess uh, they thought it was something much oh, cooler. But louder than actually, bombs. I think it's louder much than cooler it's than like, what you guys think. We thought it was a Smith's album. Yeah, we thought it was no, a, I don't it listen wasn't. to the Smiths. I'm not that kind of person. Yeah, <laughs> you're not cool. <laughs> exactly, John. <laughs> no, this is a poetry slam contest for high school students in oh, nice. Chicago, and yeah. I used to coach some kids. Tom is so uninterested. I know, in this guy. Like, That's enough about Lindsay. Let's move on. <laughs> All I wanted to say was my the, daughter. I haven't seen her in like uh, over a week. And the Green Mill. That's where I used to go for Poetry Slam. That's where Poetry mm. Slam was invented. Boom. I was oh, there when God it started. Damn. He Sorry. was there. <laughs> I fell asleep. Oh my, my bad. God. Oh my God. It's not about Tom. No. You gotta, I mean, <laughs> just like. My brother. You know, let's, talk some, let's talk some poetry. Like that's sure to drive up the numbers. Dad, you weren't here when we were trying to figure out a way to start the show, so we just we were left to our own devices. I already did, man. I saved everybody a thousand dollars, and you guys mocked me. You know, <laughs> it was no mocking. I was. It was a lot of mocking. There was not. I was just was like, like, I can't believe if we're here in ten years, it's going to be something. Uh, yeah. yeah, we're going to be here in ten years. We're going to be nationally syndicated by then. I agree. To add that. Yeah. There you go. That's right? what I meant. Not here. It'll be like airing. In oh, a I'll finally have made some money off of this thing. Oh uh, yeah. You are five percent owner, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Or is it three percent? No, five. I think, five. I think you're generous. Way too much. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's like what man, the hell it never shows up. I'm even. like the minority <laughs> partner, and it's barely yeah, here. Well, I'm in school right now. Okay. Yeah. I want you to sell your shares. Yeah. I'll They're sell. gonna be worth some money in a decade. I'll give you a smooth ten bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm overpaying. By the way. Whatever's in the swear jar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. There the you swear go. jar is yours. Not Lindsay's. Well, you know, something happened. Um, this is interesting because we, uh, you know, the mayor previewed something last week, which was really, I think, the first time it had been mentioned in public, which was his theory about uh, first congressional district. Yeah. Uh, by the way, should we do lockpot in the news? Oh yeah, we're gonna. John. Uh oh, here we go. Oh, God. This is really cheesy. Oh. Lockpod. Lock. <laughs> mayor Tom's political prediction. Did it come true? This is Lockpod. You're listening to Lockpod. That was horrible. It was terrible. I wasn't really ready. really awkward. I was <laughs> aware of Matt Money Smith just decided to turn off Lockpod yeah. and go surfing. I wasn't, I wasn't ready. Yeah, I know. But um, Like when you hear that, that news. I clip, need to be ready gotta, to go. You got to get your voice out. You I agree. To, it, was, yeah. it was quick this morning. Matt Money Smith would have been all over that, John. Yep. You, you yeah. served it up and Kevin whiffed. I literally <laughs> just tossed it up. Sorry about and that. Whoosh, swing and a miss. <laughs> mocking me. I think you even I am laughed. mocking you. <laughs> You even laugh. I like, did. You started it. I well, look at Kevin. Like, and I, Kevin's like, oh, oh, am I supposed to be doing something I didn't something think here? through it this morning. Sorry it, about by that. By the way, why is the earth red on that? 
It's like a Russian it's a Soviet global Earth. warming. Look at Mars. Yeah. That's like a Russian newscast. Martians. It's like we're a Russian newscast. Well, no one sees that. The they just the there is people we'll show them what we're talking about. Here YouTube we go. sees it. Does people watch it, it on Facebook. It wasn't yeah. projected, Father. But it looks Earth. like a Russian news agency. It's, it's like TASS. It's warming. I think it's like TASS. It's like a TASS opening. I should have said po- Mayor Tom's political prediction update. Okay. okay. We're going to give Kevin another chance, chat. All right. Let's you go. Ready? Let's Here go. we go. <laughs> You're listening to LockPod with Mayor Tom and Kevin Smith, and this is Mayor Tom's political prediction update. Wow. Good morning, comrade. <laughs> I mean, this is like TAS, right? Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is an update on a story we did a couple weeks ago about even, yeah. a theory that I had when the new maps came out and the congressional district changed. And it was like a slight change. And it looked like very inconspicuous change. Like, because there was fear that the first congressional district in Indiana was going to be radically changed, uh, like dropping it south into the farm, you know, the rural areas of, you know, northwest Indiana. And it didn't. It was literally like a neighborhood change, a small little shift, like maybe almost one. like unnoticeable, like it, basically really unnoticeable. And if you're, if you're, I think if you're not attuned to politics like you are, Tom, I mean, you're like, ah, whatever. It was barely. And initially, there was comments thanking the Republican supermajority. Hey, thank you for not jacking up the first congressional district. I'm not trying to. And I'm then, just saying there and was. And then you were like, wait a minute. There was a change, and I'm like, why did they change it? Really, the population didn't shift that much. And your didn't theory is it. there's never a coincidence. Right. In so we followed it up and discovered that there was a neighborhood added that contained a high-ranking Republican very close to Governor uh, Eric Holcomb uh, named Blair, Blair Milo. She was the former mayor of LaPorte. She's a great lady. She's super smart. She's a great candidate. She's obviously a Republican. Uh, she's part of the governor's cabinet, and she recently quit a few months ago to take on a job in the private sector which makes you scratch your head because she quit being mayor to go work for Governor Holcomb. So, like, why would she go into the governor's cabinet and then quit unless there was some plan going on? And then you combine that with the district changing and including her into the first congressional district. Now, Kevin, could you explain the latest update on this? Well, yeah, I mean, after the Democrats got their hats handed to him in Virginia, um, Kevin McCarthy, who really just grates me, um, got on to the wherever he was, I think some podium, and, uh, you know, RNCC was kind of celebrating this and saying, like, look out, Democrats, because if this is a bellwether, you know, the Virginia gu- gubernatorial race and you, you barely won in New Jersey, we're coming for you. And he said, if you're I think he said something to the effect of if you're D plus 16, meaning that if you're in a district, if you're a congr- congressman or woman that's in a district that you won as a Democrat by 16 points or less, look out, we're coming for you. Is basically what he said. Okay. And then the next day the list came out and they ran through a bunch of districts that are usually considered safe Democratic districts mm-hmm. and said, these are now on our target list. And one of them was Indiana one, which wow. is, which is crazy because as we all know, um, you know, dis- first district, first congressional district in Indiana is one of the most secure democratic districts in, in the country. If easily. There's yeah. never been a Republican elected in that district since we've been alive. No. And well before that, I mean, right. So fifties, maybe No, I, I just, I don't believe in coincidences. I've said this before and you start adding up all these clues. And I think all indications point to the fact that Blair Milo is running for Congress and yeah, I mean, I'm announcing for her Blair. You can thank <laughs> me later. Okay. They, they didn't just, you know what I mean? Like it almost feels like they've got a plan in place there is and they're like, Oh, now we're going to target it. Now the we're plan gonna... was this. So it goes back. It's Blair expressed interest to governor Holcomb. Probably governor Holcomb tells the super majority that's drawing the maps. Hey, just do a little change and add Laporte into the city of Laporte into this district. That won't hurt Jackie Walorski in the second. It's not going to hurt Jackie. It's a very small move. It just adds this neighborhood into the first congressional district. I got a person that's going to run and she's great. Right. And then they make this minor little change to the district and get thanked for doing it, by the way. And now Blair Milo, you know, is out there campaigning. She's recently done a head. She's done like two or three headline appearances in Porter County recently. And now, you know, you got the Republic, or National Republican Central Committee coming out and placing the first congressional district on a target list. Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, I personally still think it's safe, but I guess we'll wait and see what happens. If they're going to have I'm a gonna chance I'm going to make that clear. It. What you just said, Frank Murvan will beat her. Yeah. Okay? He will. All right? But, like, sort of like what I'm doing in Indiana, obviously it's, I mean, I'm fighting a fight that a lot of people are like, wow, you know, that's going to be tough. It's a red state. It's going right. to be tough. What you're doing is going to be really tough. How do you expect to win? I hear a lot of that stuff. I'm sure she'll hear the same kind of thing. And what I tell people is, hey, I want to beat Todd Young. I think I can beat Todd Young. I'm going to try to beat Todd Young, right? But at the top of the ticket, which is where I'll be, 
I'm going to set the stage for all the state reps, all the state senators, all the county officials that are running across Indiana. I'm going to help set the tone from the top of the ticket, and hopefully it's a good tone that I'm setting so that my carryover helps all these other candidates running all across the state of Indiana, mm -hmm. right? She could be thinking very similarly about the first congressional district is, hey, I think I could win this race. I think I, I could do really well in LaPorte County. I'm going to do really well in Porter County. I think I can hold my own in Lake County and possibly pull off an upset. And even if I don't win... I'm going to bring out Republican votes. All these candidates in Northwest Indiana. Because Republicans are going to be fired up because the RNC targeted it. They're going to put money into and it. She's a good candidate. I mean, we all acknowledge she's a good candidate. Just like, by the way, just like me statewide, I'm a good candidate. Whether people think I can win or not is another thing, but I'm no patsy. Like, Todd Young's not happy I'm running. I'll guarantee you that. Because yep. he's like, damn, I got a real candidate. You know, That's why you still, have a track Todd Young's probably like, I still think I can win, but this guy's the legit. He's going to take me to the mat. He's going to say things I don't want him to say. And that's why I got a tracker. That's why Todd Young <laughs> hired a tracker to follow me around like a creep, by the way. <laughs> Who does that? Your U.S. senator does that. He's a creep. I think uh, going back to the 1st Congressional District, Tom, I think what you said is exactly accurate. If I think if, if I was a Republican, I'd say, you know what? If we have a chance to get that district, it's going to be this time around. So let's get a good candidate. Let's take a shot at it and see what happens. It's right. in midterms. Traditionally, you know, the party in power doesn't do well. Maybe we can maybe we can steal this one because it was closer than it ever has been the last time around. Right. Probably because it was an open seat. So. It was in Frank's first time running. Yeah, exactly. Ride, right. Exactly. So I think once <clears throat> Congressman Rivera gets in there and he's you know wins several times, then he's safe. But right now they're thinking, oh, we can go after him. He's safe in November for sure. Yeah, but like in this case. The Republicans don't think Frank is safe in November, and they're going to take gonna, a shot. They're going to take a shot, and they're going to put up a good candidate, and we'll see how he does. I think I think he'll still be victorious personally. I do too. Mm -hmm. I do too. But I think it might be a little bit more uncomfortable than the congressman's used to in November. You right? know what? If that and if that race ends up bringing out votes for Democrats, that's good too. Because it will that helps you. Oh, and it that will. Helps, yeah, and Frank so, and I will be campaigning together without a doubt. Right. So it's interesting. It's going to all play out. Yep. We're going to see what happens. Why don't All we right. do an update? Let's, uh, you want to do an update or you want to do some ads and come back with update and mailbag? Let's go. All right. Ads it is. Sure. You start. Wow. All right. I get to do our premier sponsor, which Ooh. is Powering America. Pow. Season four is powered by our premier sponsor, Powering America. With the explosive growth of renewable energy in America today, call Powering America to meet your needs for renewable energy in your home or office, including electric vehicle chargers and solar power solutions. Trust the electrical professionals of Powering America. Visit poweringnorthwestindiana.org. Thank you, Kevin. Tortillas Nuevo Leon. Tortillas Nuevo Leon is the gold standard of Mexican cuisine throughout the Midwest. Look for Tortillas Nuevo Leon's popular red and white label at your local grocery store and enjoy quality Mexican products made with local expertise. Tortillas Nuevo Leon, hechas con amor, para ti y tu familia de todo corazón. Tortillas Nuevo León, hechas con amor, para ti y tu familia, ¡Yeeha! de todo corazón. It's so much better that way. Harmony with Eli. Uh, I was playing the drums, if you guys heard There's it. There's yee with Eli. Misprint specializes in delivering the highest quality signs and printing on time and within budget. Misprint's experience in technology allows them to offer custom, commercial, on-demand printing and sign solutions and metal cards you can count on. Rick Baltzenberger and his team have served Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana for over 30 years, and they have two convenient locations in Munster and Hammond. That's Misprint Printing. By way brewing. By the way, I listened to that show the other day with Dave Toth. He did a really good job. Yeah, it was, a good it was show. nice to have him. Yeah, it was nice to have him in here. By way brewing. By way brewing is a family-friendly microbrewery with a spacious tap room and outside patio. Brewing equipment offers a unique backdrop for your private event, like weddings, reunions, and corporate parties. We are conveniently located just off of 8094 at the Kennedy Avenue South exit. Come on by and enjoy Byway's award-winning beers and unbeatable menu. Try Electronics wants to be your complete communications provider. Try Electronics has been a leader in this industry for more than 55 years, and they're dedicated to assisting their clients with their systems integration needs. We have the expertise and experience to provide superior results for a wide variety of products. For more information, call Try Electronics today at 800 722-6793. And thank you to our sponsors, especially Powering America, our premier sponsor. Yeah. All right. Let's move. Well, Campaign what update. What are you doing this week? You know, Campaign John, we update, need like an on the, road, on the road little on music. On the road like, again. Dun, 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 it wasn't dun, a lot dun, of on the road this dun, week, though. This no. week was, next week is on the road. Yes, it is. This week is not. Um, this week was more local, uh, which, by the way, I would like to remind people, 
that Northwest Indiana is the second largest market in Indiana. So obviously I don't want to ignore the second largest market in Indiana. So there are a number of events around Northwest Indiana that I need to hit and I will hit and I have been hitting and I've been hitting it since the beginning of my, you know, beginning of my mayorship. Quite frankly, without a doubt, I, I'm a region person. I worked the region hard, but this week seemed like it was a region week for me, which is fine. You know, not bad. Plus, a, plus a Zoom call, which is great too, because you were able call to get with, down somewhere. with the sixth congressional district. Woo, that's but, something, man. That that district, I like as we're getting to big. know these things, or as I'm getting to know these things, I should say, it's like uh, Columbus, 19 uh, counties, Columbus, Indiana, Richmond, Indiana, Muncie. Uh, that you know, it's southeast corner of the state. So, John, did you get that? Is there a way you can bring that up, that picture? That's crazy. That, I was just shocked no. when I counted. No, okay. No, that's right. 19, <laughs> 19 Shelbyville. Uh, you know, it's the southeast corner. Madison, by the way. Like Muncie to Madison. That's Muncie how, to Madison. There you go. But, is. like, we've been to it a few times already, the 6th Congressional District. The funny thing is, is yeah. out, of, out of the districts that are yeah. away from the I Northwest, agree. we've been there the most. It seems like we've been in the 6th more than the ninth, and the ninth is more friendly to Democrats, but I have been working the 6th. Don't pretty say hard. that to our 6th district. No, no, no. Friends. And I'm, I'm going to be everywhere, but it's it's just funny how the beginning of the campaign seems like we're been really working the six not that and i'm todd young's probably laughing right now uh like, when ha, we said ha, ha. six district you're like you're gonna do well in the six little district. does he know about our six district strategy but you know i mean honestly like part of the reason yeah. todd young sucks as a u.s senator is because he doesn't visit the parts of indiana where he doesn't do well and i'm not going to be like that when i'm the u.s senator when i'm the u.s senator i'm going to go to the sixth congressional district even though i know that i may struggle there but i'm going to be their u.s senator todd that's the problem with you. You only look at Republicans as Hoosiers. If you're a Democratic Hoosier, you look at them like you don't matter. And that you've been treating us like that since you walked in. And that's why we're going to be walking you out next year, Todd. Yeah, Wayne County, Shelby County, Jennings County, you've, all, you've hit all those. And yeah. More, and Bar yeah, Bartholomew, all these things. Right. All right, great. Exciting. So, yeah, so that we was did kinda that. Cool. That was nice. Thank uh, you to uh, our district chair, 6th District Chair Annette. She did a great job on that Zoom call. Uh, another thing I did this week was uh, I did uh, – I was the keynote speaker for the Lake County Democratic Party, which was nice. Thank you, Chairman Weezer. Yeah, it was nice. I, I was on. I gave them the. It's funny because people around here know me, obviously, and I gave them the speech I would give if people didn't know me. Mm. I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna," because you know, like I, a test, like a. Well, it gives me a chance to give to do my speech. Agreed. In front of a the by more the way, huge crowd. Yeah, what four four or five hundred people? Absolutely. Yeah, so like I got a chance to do the campaign speech, which I'm still getting used to, obviously. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I think I did a good job. But that was a packed event. It was nice. I got to hang out with Marissa at a fundraiser, which is nice. Yeah. You know, her and I campaigning. don't get to campaign together very often. Fun. Yeah. So that was really cool. Um, uh, I went to uh, the uh, Porter County Sheriff, Dave Reynolds, who is a good friend of mine. Um, his son announced that he's running for Porter County Sheriff. And All, also named Dave Reynolds. Yeah. Hmm. Which is easy. Sure. I, I imagine they use similar <laughs> signs, right? Yeah. Hey, would, Dad, you mind I if would. I use your signs? Yeah, like, That's funny. So he's... Great really candidate. He, no, no, no. Sure. I know he's a great candidate, but just being realistic as a named, I'm the same name as my father. Yeah. Um, I use different colors and I was in a different party. Okay. True. But if I were Dave Jr. running for Porter County Sheriff, I would use the same colors and the same sign. Why not? Save right. yourself a bunch of money, right? But he's going to be criticized. Like, and that's him and I are having lunch and I'm going to show him some of the pitfalls I went through early. Yeah, it's being, good. You guys have very similar. Yeah, yeah interesting. I was like, and I've already gotten through it, obviously, because mm -hmm. that happened 20 years ago. But Dave's about to go through what I went through 20 years ago. So him and I have lunch coming up. That'll and be uh, interesting conversation. Looking forward to talking to him. And his father has always been like a mentor to me, even though he's the Porter County Sheriff. But he's always been a good guy in, Great in the Democratic yeah, Party. Yeah, right. Sure. So, and by the way, the kind of guy that I need to emulate, because he's a Democrat in Porter County that's successful, because people trust him and they know he's moderate and he's pro law enforcement. And these are the same strategies I need to take on the road, which is easy for me because that's who I am. And it's also a great reminder that Democrats can win in Indiana. I mean, you know, Porter County is usually a little bit, a bit of a toss up, leans Republican. And yeah. he, Dave Reynolds, the sheriff if, Reynolds, has been if I lived easily in, elected there. If I lived in Porter County, I would do very well out there. I would, you did well in the congressional. I race. did well in the congressional. <laughs> but if I lived there and I ran for judge or because they could elect their judges because they're Republicans. You <laughs> know? So like, wow. In Lake County, we were under martial law. We it's can't elect unique. our judges. <laughs> That's another story. What a story. unique idea. Yeah. <laughs> so a story anyway, for another day. It was a busy week, uh, but next week is going to be busier. We're going to have excitement when we talk about Yeah, next week. week when I give you an update, it'll yeah, be sure. uh, a lot more uh, travel involved. Good. But, yeah. All right. Mailbag, John. Let's go. Mailbag. We got a, a good one today from Luke M. I know he's a listener, by the way. Of course, he's a really? listener because he submitted to it. But I've seen his name in chat and all that before. All so right. Luke M. Luke M. Uh, Mayor Tom and Kevin, 
I went to a national chain today, B Dubs. And, oh boy. Uh-oh. and they, uh, this is one of my favorites. <laughs> They're not sponsoring. <laughs> Hello, B Dubs. <laughs> it's your turn again. You, <laughs> and you That's love right. B Dubs. I do That's love, right. no, they got rid of my freaking sauce. Yeah. I haven't yeah. been back. What? I have not been back since I got rid of hot barbecue. They Kevin. got honey barbecue and it's really good. Yeah. If you like I get sweet. the Parmesan garlic. Good for you, dude. Have fun at B Dubs. Oh, Luke is in the me. chat. Hey, Luke, what's He's up? He's in. What is living, Kansas right living now. in Kansas at the moment. Dude, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thanks Luke, for listening from Kansas. We are we're huge in Kansas. Yeah, mm-hmm. Now we are. Yeah. Jayhawks. <laughs> I love it. Share that stream, Luke. Yeah. I went to a national chain today. <laughs> Luke Rock, tells chalk, us Jayhawk. And they nonchalantly added a 20 percent tip to my bill. Mm. I don't mind an added gratuity because of short staffing, but let the people know. I agree, Luke. I was about to add a 22 percent <laughs> tip before I look closer at the receipt. That they only text you now, shaking my head. Wow. You hit the nail on the head a few weeks ago and had to let you know the practice is spreading. Everybody check your receipts. Mm. I love Luke. One of Mayor's you are pet peeves. Mayor Tom's pet peeves. That's why Luke and I are very similar. And, you know, we think it similarly. And the server at B-Dubs lost 2%. He was going to do 22. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't like it. I agree. The, the text receipt, it's all a scam. It's like, we're going to screw you. It's you're going to tip me 42% mm-hmm. without even realizing it. <laughs> See? Yeah. Technology. I'm telling Ask for you, a man. paper receipt. Uh, jalapenos lost a solid Mexican-eating customer. I eat Mexican <laughs> food. Even though you ate it on the sly. I <laughs> didn't know. It was, a, it was in a styrofoam box. Like, <laughs> what am I supposed to turn down tacos and like burritos? You I'm would not. never do that. Bring me a, a styrofoam box. Full of Mexican I'm food. I'm not going to inquire. You're eating it. Where was this made <laughs> before I eat this? I am not. I'm just going to eat it. Is this Mexican food? Yes. I'll eat it. I'll eat it. Where did you get it? <laughs> Jalapenos. I'm like, don't tell me that. <laughs> Let I'm me eating. eat this. Yes. All right. We got another mail. Uh, we got a young man who was honored at a reception we had last week. Really? Nice young man because he works with uh, underprivileged. Okay. okay. Um, dear Mary McDermott, it was such a privilege to attend your 34th annual Volunteers Award Breakfast and to be recognized. Thank mm. you so much for this honor. Sincerely, Noah M. Very nice. And by the way, I'm never going to say their full name, but Noah's a great young man, Hammond boy, and uh, works with the underprivileged and was recognized by the city of Hammond for his outstanding volunteerism. I think that volunteer breakfast is one of the coolest things that the city does all year. You want to just mention a little bit about that? I mean, it's I know you do it every year, so you've done 20 of them. I mean, we recognize we take, uh, you know, nominations from the public on people that go above and beyond and help the underprivileged. You know, you could be helping, you know, adults, you could be helping seniors, you could be helping kids, you could be helping people learn how to read, coaching teams, whatever. And we've done this for 34 years since my father was mayor and it's still going. I think it's a good reminder of how much is going on in the community around you. You know, you don't even realize all the people that are putting in so much time around the community. That, that, that's what I think is the best part about it. Agree. I got like one, two, three, four letters, uh, all with the same topic. It was all about the senior and disabled checks. We read, a, I, I am getting buried in letters right now from that. Very I'm, nice. I'm going to read one of them because it was very, it was handwritten, but I appreciate all of them. In fact, I'll just say that Pearl wrote one, um, William and Jean wrote one, Joe wrote one, and then Janice is the one I'm going to read off, uh, Mayor Tom and the Hammond City Council. Thank you for helping. No, no, this is just to me. I'm sorry. But th- there's a reason that it's just to me. Thank you for helping us seniors. Don't ever leave the city of Hammond. Happy holidays. Well, how sweet. Hmm. As soon as I read that, though, because like she wants me to stay mayor, mm-hmm. I think that she's possibly one of the people that voted against me when I ran for Congress. <laughs> You're like, thank you, but... She voted against me when I ran for Congress. I Maybe. can tell you. That's, a, that's, that's a, one of the common themes I heard from I know, Hammond residents. I is know. They were like trying to be nice to me when I lost. They're like... Hey, I love you as mayor. That's why I voted against you. <laughs> I'm like, don't ever say that to me again, oh, please. Like, I never want to hear that from you. Yeah. Like, and, and I have a feeling that it's one of those. Janice is one of the ones that lo- loves me so much. She, she voted never wants you to me. leave. Right. Yeah. It's like I'm drafted. All right. Well, <laughs> thank you, Janice. <laughs> I love you, Janice, too. <laughs> thank you very much. And like, you've been conscripted. I'm conscripted. There you go. That's the word. If people want to submit mailbag, how do they do that? You can find me. Uh, you, you say it, Steve. Why are you asking rhetorical questions? Steve. Lindsay, how about Lindsay's spiel? We haven't yeah. asked her to do yeah. that. Steve. Right. You've been gone so long we forgot you're supposed to do it every I time. Missed we eliminated that part. One of my regular <laughs> episodes. <laughs> I was gone for like a month and you still remembered. But then I missed one episode and suddenly it's I know. huge. All right, know. you're back. Let's hear it. <sighs> oh, wow. That's like a... Are you doing this? But include yes. like okay, how fine. to reach him by mail. That was dramatic. 
<laughs> Hi, uh, you're listening to Left of Center, where we cover everything from politics to important events of the day in the Midwest and the nation, all while having way too much fun while doing it. If you can't get enough of us, you can follow us on Facebook at Left of Center Podcast or on Twitter at LockPod, L-O-C-P-O-D. Uh, if you cannot listen in live, you can always download our episodes from the Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio apps. Just search Left of Center Podcast and look for our red and blue logo. And if you want to be in Mailbag or you want to have an ad... You can send us an email at steve, S-T-E-V-E, at lockpod, L-O-C-P-O-D, dot com. Nice. The end. <laughs> well, thank you. That's high energy. Do you Steve or even DM checks us. his email anymore? Steve, send a message to Steve. Or, or you can just text dad directly at, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Or I get Facebook, not do Facebook that. DM. Facebook Listen, DM. I get, yeah. I get multiple places where I get mailbag, and I just, if they're good, I'll grab them and yeah. use them for the show. Yeah. Because uh, hold of us. Sometimes Some of are... they didn't even intend for them to be mailbag. We're just like, hey, that's a right. really good point. No, We're just exactly. Talk about Sometimes it. <laughs> if I get a crappy tweet, I'll read it off just because it's funny. So like, <laughs> don't that's give away mailbag. all our secrets. That's right. Mailbag. Mailbag. Well, what am I saying? We're not doing mailbag. Boop, We're boop, doing boop, uh, boop, boop, ads. Boop. And then, uh, hey, I went mailbag. to Elvis Costello concert the other day. Interesting right. story I wanted to talk about. First off, I wanted to talk about the show. Kevin wanted to go, but he yeah, couldn't. It's a long but anyway, let's do some ads, and we'll come back, and we'll talk about some music. How about All right, that? Okay. All right. Grizzolius Concrete. Grizzolius Concrete was voted number one in the Times Best of the Region 2020 and 2021. Grizzolius Concrete specializes in all of your concrete projects, as they have been using the original cement finish in the... <laughs> California knows how to party california Never style since 1972 and also offers stamped and colored concrete for more information or a project quote call <laughs> grizzolius concrete at 219-659-4127 midwest air duct cleaning at midwest air duct cleaning your health is their number one priority they're dedicated to providing top-notch quality services at an affordable price their technicians have been trained to shelter the members of your household from potential airborne contaminants if you'd like more information on how to protect the lungs of your home, call Marinko and his team at 219-671-8868 today. Calumet Brewery. Calumet Brewery wants to tell you about Michelob Ultra. Michelob Ultra is a superior light beer with only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories, all while being one of the fastest growing brands in the region. Or you can try Ultra Pure Gold, an organic light lager with only 2.5 carbs and 85 calories, brewed for your healthy lifestyle. Enter to win a Michelob Ultra golf bag through calbrew.com. That's C-A-L-B-R-E-W.com. Check out Calumet Brewery's Facebook page for details. Challenger Learning Center. The holiday season is here. Challenger Learning Center invites families to celebrate the season with a show full of classic holiday hits all set to laser lights, all aglow. <laughs> the hol- Thanks, Steve, for this, this right, this copy. Aww. This right. This write-up, this... Reading, the holiday laser light shows will take place on Friday, December 17th at 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. Tickets are 12 bucks and must be purchased in advance. Visit clcnwi.com or connect on social media at Challenger NWI on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I wonder if anybody in the chat went to the Halloween laser spectacular. They said it was sold out. The fright. What was it yeah, called? Fright, light, fright, fright light, light spectacular. Laser spectacular, right. yeah. I don't know, but Josh Huddleston says this feels like more of a reality TV <laughs> show on that. MTV than a podcast. <laughs> nice. I nice. agree. Are we, like, keeping sure up is. with the Kardashians, or are no. we, like, the real housewives of I think oh. we're, like, uh, what... I've what never seen one, one of them. Naked and Afraid. Uh, <gasps> that's not on MTV. <laughs> I love that show. That's definitely not us. Which one? I can't think of it. They showed music videos, and it was, like, one guy was the host. Oh, URL that was on oh. E that was on E no no this is the, this was yeah what's URL. the guy's name is it URL oh god <laughs> I don't know anyways I speaking of music really I went to uh, speaking of Elvis Costello the other day love Elvis Costello I do too I should have do you like you. you don't like him John or oh. uh, just never really listened to him much he's kind Lindsay, of we're Lindsay little... is way way too old for you right I have Same no John. idea who that is he said Elvis Costello you've listened and to him you like, just don't guy's dead <laughs> no you don't realize honey you've, you've listened to him a lot I play him in the car a lot he he plays a lot of you know radio like, radio yeah. watching yeah. detective watching Allison detective. Uh, none yeah. of these are ringing a bell there you a, go so anyway uh, I go to see him and I hate this when you see artists you know what I hate you see an artist like Elvis Costello, right? Mm-hmm. And they have a new record. Right. Right? And it's like, appreciate your new record. Okay? Yeah, they're only going to play that. That's like, so it's like, a two, first off, 
first off, the band was excellent, and Elvis Costello was excellent. I do want to say that. He's on top of his game. Where is it at? Chicago Theater. Okay? Beautiful venue. How gorgeous is that place? Love it. It's great for a concert. I've seen a lot of plays there, but to see concerts there is really special because it's very intimate. Yeah, I saw Neil Young there. You're literally like... I was literally like 25 feet from Elvis Costello. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's a gorgeous set. You took this picture? Yeah. It's nice, oh, there right? you go. I like Beautiful. the cool lights. Everything's gold. It was cool. Like, like It looked like it was retro, and you know, it was really cool. Very cool. And uh, But like, so it's like a two-hour, 15-minute show, right? Mm-hmm. And I say the first hour and 15 minutes is all this new stuff. Ah. Oh. Not and even mixed in? No. Never, never. Not mind. even the good stuff no, mixed dude. in. For like an hour and 15 minutes, I really didn't know much what he was saying. John and Mellencamp thought, did that. I know, and I never I never saw him again after. Man. <laughs> I'm, I honestly, John, God. I love John Mellencamp. I saw John Mellencamp. And I thought he sucked. Come on. I did, dude. He's a Hoosier. No. Agree. We I love him. Shut up, by the way. He's a Hoosier we dad. Love him. Yeah, I, love, I love John Malakamp, yeah. but I thought he sucked that night. Wow. Okay. God damn. I, I would just, see him. I just lost a big backer. <laughs> Tom's oh, middle finger. No. John no, Mellencamp. No, 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 no. I love John Mellencamp. I wanted yeah. John Mellencamp to play the fest. We made Many multiple, years. We made multiple offers on him, and it yeah. just never came together. So He it's lives not, here. I agree, and he's a Democrat. <laughs> it's a three-hour drive. But I saw him on a night in, in Milwaukee. It was a weeknight, and he was playing none, none of his hits. He did the same thing that Elvis Costello did, except for John went the whole show hardly playing anything we knew. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't know his new stuff. I wanted to hear Jack and Diane. I wanted to hear the old stuff, right? Pink so houses. I go to see Elvis, uh, Elvis Costello, and he did that for the first hour and 15 minutes. And then the second half of the show was all of the stuff that you know and love. Okay. And it was great. It was, but like you had to, you know, and it was a weeknight and dude, you know me, I get tired at like 930. I'm like tired. My body is like shutting down and I'm listening and Elvis Costello's new stuff is very like, it's mellow. musical, but it's mellow, very mellow, very mellow. And so I'm listening to real mellow music and it's, I don't know the words or anything cause it's all new, you know? So I was sort of, you know, trying to stay awake the first half. And then the second half of the show, I thought it was excellent. I did, but it's like, good, man. I would love to see him. I mean, I haven't seen him. Gosh, I want to say 25 years probably. Really? Yeah. Long time ago. Was he good back in the day? Unbelievable. Was he all, all hits back in the well, day? Well, sure. I mean, that's when right. like, the new albums were coming out right. and he was, they never hits, you know, they were Dude. playing on XRT and stuff. So, right. No, he was a great musician, though. But a uh, crazy thing happened, though. So I'm there with a friend, okay? And there's a dude, like, a few rows over in the Chicago theater, mm-hmm. okay? So, like, we're in a the Chicago theater. And for those of you that aren't aware, it's a gorgeous, like, small venue, 2,500 people. Classic theater. It's, a, like it's more for plays, right? 20s, probably, right? Yeah, yeah, right? Like, super, super decorated. When like, Dave Letterman comes to town, that's where he does his show. Right. When in fact, become, Smartless. Wheel of Fortune there. Smartless, the podcast, is doing a tour. They're doing Chicago there Theater. In fact, that's probably the next time I'll be back there, right? Because mm-hmm. I love Smartless. We're which going is, to that. I we love have it. to go to that. Good. I'm glad we're all on the same page. I don't know who that is. It's uh, Will Ferrell, Jason Bateman, and Sean Will Hayes. And oh. They're so funny. Will Arnett, what did I say? I said Will, Will Ferrell. Ferrell. I, I, I wish. Will Arnett, yeah. No, but they're excellent. And Will Arnett's my favorite, funny enough. So I, I'm sorry. I gorgeous it. venue. Yeah. Yeah. So there's gorgeous venue, and we're in Chicago, right? And there's a dude, like, I don't know, 20 seats over in another, like, section. But, like, there's an aisle between him and me. Mm-hmm. And we're sitting there listening. And like I said, it was really mellow, right? And all of a sudden, this dude lights up a huge joint. Like Whoa. in Chicago theater. <laughs> That's a non-smoking venue, I think. It's such a it, sacred place. He was the Chicago only theater. one in the whole theater. Like it was obvious, though. As soon as he lit it up, it was like, pfft, like you could smell it. Like holy crap, some Who's, dude is where's like. Where's that coming from? I respect the guts on that man. Dude, yeah, humongous, but, right? Whoa, the guts, humongous guts, right? Yeah. This dude, I'm like, should've everybody's done like, one hitter. You should have seen. Even a one hitter would have been, but like he had this huge like bomber joint. He bought probably went to <laughs> like a dispensary right before he got there. It was, like, it was a Snoop show. He. What's a bomber <laughs> joint for those that don't it's, know? It's far more. It's far bigger than one person should have, right? Okay. Like a Cheech and Chong. Yeah. Like, no, but like <laughs> they, you know, so like Chicago, like they sell like these twenty dollars ones, and he has like a twenty dollars one, and he's like sitting there by himself just smoking, <laughs> and I'm like horrified. I'm like, what the hell is the matter with this guy? It's freaking, you know, it's freaking Elvis Costello in the Chicago theater. It's like it smells. Right, you're good, not outside. But that's inappropriate. What's that? You're not outside, is what you're saying. I mean, this you're is, inside. It's just like you're inside. I'm not like a, cru- a, a, a prude in any way, shape, or form when it comes to weed. Okay, mm-hmm. so, but we're in a Chicago theater, and there's nobody smoking. Like you're the only <laughs> one smoking the joint, right? And so everybody's looking at him like, "Is that legal?" Like everybody's like, "Wow, <laughs> I didn't know." Like you know, like if you can go that way, right? So everyone else starts busting out their right. weed. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think everybody was thing. reaching in their pocket at that point, right? And then the bouncer came over. Oh boy! And talked to him. That was short lived. 
Yeah, and we we're like looking. So like nobody's paying attention to Elvis at this point. Everyone's we're like, just like, like, what's going on with this? Everyone's dude? like, can I pull out my weed? Let me see yeah, what happens like, here. What happens here <laughs> determines a lot about the rest of the show, you know, right? So we're sitting there looking at him, and then uh, he got up and left. With the, wow, with the they bouncer. didn't like arrest him. They didn't like pound him to the ground or anything. They just said, "Hey, come with me." And he went with them. Whoa, he didn't come back. Mm. Whoa. So like his obviously, maybe he just went outside and smoked. <laughs> he took it his or... massive <laughs> joint and went, went outside <laughs> and did not come back. And I was thinking to myself, he finished it off. All by himself. <laughs> but like, there's this weird thing now because weed is legal in Chicago, right? So there's this weird yeah, thing about. Yeah, but you don't like light up a cigarette in the middle of the Chicago theater during like Wicked. Thank it's... you. I agree, <laughs> right? So... There's like the potheads out there have to realize that there's a, pla- a, a there's place a in time. And place. Yeah, and that was not the time and place. Chicago theater was Aragon not. Aragon Ballroom. Why wouldn't you just do an for edible? Nine Inch Nails, do it. Why not just do an edible? Aragon Ballroom, Nine Inch Nails, Shh, without for a doubt. Sure. Right. Okay, that's appropriate. Riviera. Pro- appropriate, sure. 100%, right? Like, uh, Chicago Theater, Elvis Costello? No. Not appropriate. But by the way, I go to an Annie show. This is like Annie before the pandemic. Same thing. Dude is- What? We're at Annie. Annie? Annie. Like the musical? The sun will the come musical. out tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that one. That one. There's all, those, all these little girls with red dresses. I go to the bathroom, and there's a dude straight up smoking a joint in the bathroom. And I'm like, I'm like, what the hell is the matter with you, man? I'm like- that's freaking Annie, dude. Like, what's the matter with I'm you, right? I'm going to defend him She's here. an orphan. It is Annie, and I, <laughs> but I you're super Annie. hate She's that musical. But what I'm saying. I would want to be high for uh, that, too. He was definitely, it was intermission. This dude smoking a joint. He's like, Annie. I, like, I, I get can't through get through this, through this so, like, so let's go back then and review here. When you're seeing Elvis Costello at the Chicago Theater. Inappropriate. Not appropriate. Due to the venue. Not necessarily because of the Elvis Costello. but Right. Yeah, if we saw Elvis Costello someplace else, maybe it's appropriate. Sure. Not in Chicago theater. Mm-hmm. Which you're seeing Annie Never anywhere. appropriate. Never appropriate. Don't smoke <laughs> weed at Annie, right? It's Annie. It's a bunch of kids, right? Not appropriate. <laughs> now, on the other hand, right, I went to the Grateful Dead show uh, two days in Wrigley. I went both days, actually. Sat- Friday and Saturday. It's very appropriate in that venue, outdoor, right? Outdoor. Outdoor. Outdoor at Wrigley. And it's the dead. It's a requirement, almost. I mean, there is probably... I was estimating 50,000 people at the dead show at Wrigley because the, all the stands are packed and, and then an everybody open, on the field. It's like an open stadium. Obviously. Right. It's Wrigley, right. So. Now, probably 10 percent of the people are smoking weed, maybe what? more. <laughs> I was going to say I 50. I disagree. <laughs> like I'm talking 50%. actively. Hold on. You think 50 percent of the people? For I don't. sure. Yeah. Oh, without a doubt. No. High. Like edible, yes. edible. Yes. I'm counting all that. Okay, yes. all right. oh, for yeah, sure. I say that's probably. It's but like heroin, cocaine. No, like, <laughs> I'm not going there. Shrooms. I'm not going there. But like, I'm just saying, ten percent on shrooms. <laughs> listen, I'm not going there either. MDMA. I didn't. I didn't go around asking. Okay, but I'm telling you, <laughs> it was a weird sensation for me to be there, like literally, right by the Chicago Cubs dugout. And just wow. seeing people like just straight up smoking weed. That sounds kind of nice, actually. <laughs> it was awesome. I mean, it was a really cool. Like you're like, wow, I've been coming here my whole life, and now like everybody's just straight smoking weed, listening to the Grateful Dead, which was amazing. When you say everybody, I mean it's like everybody, or just like pretty much everybody, yeah, everybody. pretty much. Wait, wait, wait. Like, yeah, pretty much everybody. everybody. But you were there. Is that a too? song? Like everybody. What do you mean? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I did. <gasps> I was at the Grateful Dead Whoa. show. How dare you? At the Dead show. Yeah. Partaking. It is kind I of did. a requirement, though, right? <gasps> Why not? What's a big deal? It's legal. Uh, I was in Chicago, where it's legal. I was at the outdoor venue, Grateful Dead shows. By the way, I was there two nights. Yes. Oh, yeah, both nice. nights. <laughs> Why not? Oh, Should we go on mute? Should we take a break? We... Yeah, it's just, we have to punt here. Uh, the, I don't know what the big deal cut is. The feed. Cut First the off, feed. Let, me, let me make something clear, okay? So I'm there, and I have a ride there and from, right? I'm in a state where it's legal. I'm at... The Grateful Dead shows, right? Sure. So, yeah, I did. Why not? Not driving. Not. I wasn't driving. I had rides. I was in a state where it's legal. I, I by the way, I had a couple of vodkas while I was there too. And <gasps> I, was, I know when there's any. Is there any? <gasps> You're doing there. the vodka. <laughs> I'm doing the vodka. I am doing the vodka also. Father. No, but like, what's the big deal? Seriously, well, like, it's just like drinking alcohol shortly after prohibition ended. It's People, actually healthier than alcohol. No doubt about it's it, a Lindsay. Plan. <laughs> but doesn't that, doesn't that just underlie the whole issue that we're having in the country about uh, marijuana and weed? Like, oh, my gosh, you're in Illinois. You, you can smoke weed. Oh, my God, you're in Indiana. You can't. I mean, it's so crazy i just read a story this morning about this three people got arrested because they came from chicago heights and they had weed in their car and they got caught and they bought it legally and then they just happened to drive through indiana and you know which is by the way for those of you who don't know chicago heights is like a mile from the indiana border right it's i drive there every day pretty much you know that's I where mean, my son goes it, to school. it just kind of underlies this whole idea i mean 
I'm not just picking on Indiana, but like every state that hasn't legalized it, it's just like, well, first of all, you're probably re- you're just drowning in not getting this revenue, you know, because you're you're not getting the revenue. Secondly, it's this mishmash of regulation. Like I'm in this state, I can I can buy it and smoke it. I'm in this state, I can't. Hey, John, could you pull up some stats real quick on uh, what Michigan and Illinois are doing in weed sales? You... I was just searching that, are you? and could I'm you... actually going to add it to your guys' notes here. Could you? So, yeah. Because, yeah. like, I mean, listen, we're missing out on a lot, being honest. Like, And I'm, I'm not – so I do admit, by the way, I don't know how often elected officials admit that they do. If I'm in a situation where it's legal, why not? Like, I grew up in Northern California. You know, I saw people my whole lives that smoked marijuana because I and lived in, in a state. California now, it's totally legal. Yeah. Well, you go to California now, like, it's on the street. You know, and by the way, if you go to Chicago, you'll smell it on the street, too. It's because it's legal, right? And it's like it's the same thing as alcohol. I approach it the same way. Like, you know. Well, what states around here, Tom, are le- I mean, just like, I'm just thinking through it. Like, Michigan. Michigan's a yes, right? Michigan, Illinois. Michigan has, here, hold on. Thanks, John. Yep. I see it now. Yeah, it's in your guys' notes. So, Michigan, uh, okay, good good facts on the cannabis industry in Michigan. In 2020, the state of Michigan redistributed over $45 million in taxes, fees from the sale of marijuana products back to municipalities. Wow. Eh, you guys want an extra couple million dollars? Um, it's estimated that there were 320 thousand full-time jobs in the cannabis industry in michigan alone in 2020 up from 235,000 the year before these are great john thank you sales hit 20 billion dollars in 2020 and are on pace to top 26 billion dollars this year and it's going to go to 46 billion in 2025 because indiana is woefully behind this so like You're missing all, the, all this revenue. the hoosiers that are ignoring the law and they're driving to Michigan or they're driving to Illinois and they're buying marijuana and they're bringing it back into Indiana illegally. That's illegal, by the way. You could go to jail for that, right? So you could go to another state and buy something legal and then drive back into your state where you live and then you can go to jail. Listen to this about Illinois. This is this is absolutely mind-boggling. And, John, these are great stats. Thank you, um, John. Last month, adults purchased 2.75 million marijuana products with most sales, 81 million coming from state residents and 42 million from out of state residents so 123 million hold dollars it, hold it. total in one month in <laughs> those, October those billion numbers are wrong then i said yeah eighth month in a row illinois topped 100 million in sales it says sales hit 20 billion in 2020 under that's, michigan that's 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 nationwide i think okay okay right. so eighth month in a row illinois topped 100 million in sales over a billion dollars in sales for 2021 and they took in over 670 million in marijuana sales and over 205 million in tax revenue this year Last month was the first time quarterly tax revenue for marijuana was greater than alcohol. Wow. Think about that. Greater than so alcohol. Alcohol, it's, well, probably because it's taxed more. Wow. I would think a higher rate. Um, I know for a fact, you know, that we have a dispensary about one mile from your house, Kevin. Yeah. A mile absolutely. and 1.2 miles, something stupid like that. Mm-hmm. And if we are, we are naive to think that they put it that close to the border, if, if they're not getting tons of Hoosiers coming over to buy marijuana legally in Illinois and then transporting it back into our state. And under Indiana law, that makes you a criminal, you know? And by the way, let's talk about federal, because if I'm uh, elected Indiana's U.S. Senator, I'm a vote to decriminalize. I'm a vote to legalize marijuana, and I will. I'll, this is an issue I think is important because think about it, like. I I I know people that have dispensaries back in California and in Colorado. I know these people Washington not State. like they're not my my best friends, but mm-hmm. we talk in Washington. Excuse me, yeah. you're right. And we talk to these people that they're young people that own these businesses. By the way, a lot of times they're young African American entrepreneurs because uh, uh, I know in Illinois they set aside a certain percentage to of make the, sure that the minority licenses. communities are able to get dispensaries and licenses, right? Which is great. So the problem that they have with these dispensaries because it's still Cannabis is still illegal at the federal level. The problem that they have is they have to do everything in cash. These marijuana dispensaries will have hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash, and they can't put it in the bank because or, it's illegal federally. Right. I mean, think about what's doing to the banking industry and, and what it could do to the banking industry in, in the U.S. I mean, right now they're sending their money to Canada. The stock market in, in Canada has marijuana companies. Not in the U.S. stock market. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're, you're talking about, how about just this? like, how about in employment taxes? How about this, Kev? How about Indiana is a farm state? Yeah. You know, southern Indiana, instead of growing some crops for a lower profit margin, they could decide, I'm going to grow marijuana mm-hmm. on these great lush fields that I have that would, you know, raise abundance of, of marijuana and it would be potent and it would be, you know, popular and people would buy it and I would make more money on my farm because I can now farm in marijuana and hemp and stuff that yeah. I couldn't do before. For years and years, I mean, Newton County and Jasper County had were always like, oh, you know, like, 
hey, we found some weed down here. Some We're closing weed. down. Yeah, right. they're, they're closing it down, or there's somebody who's growing it illegally. And I mean, this is a huge cash crop. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, you go to these other states and you read about how much um, their economies have benefited from marijuana. I mean, remember when Colorado did it? Yeah. Their tourist industry went Because it was the only place was in the only place to go. No, it's a lot more common. Sure, absolutely. So. And if you have places like South Dakota and Mississippi that are passing referendums on marijuana, mm-hmm. you know it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue that's not just like, oh my gosh, it's a liberal issue or it's a conservative issue. Let me ask you, campaign manager, is it a big deal that I just admitted to that? I'm running for U.S. Senate, and I admitted that when I was in a legal state, I smoked marijuana. I mean, I, I, did, it, it I did it two you, days in a row. I guess it I, depends who you talk to, but I mean, I think most of America. Tommy I, McDermott's calling me. I wonder if he's like, <laughs> Dad, like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Not listening to the pod. Yeah, right. Thanks, Who's going to break this first? He's Times, Post, Region News. Lockpot, LLC, P-O-D, Region John. News. I hope Region News breaks Pete, it first. Pete in chat gets the, gets the comment call. of the day. He said, Todd Young's next ad. Can you trust a Hoosier that smokes weed and dislikes Melon Camp? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, I'm, I just, Dan the Tracker, there's your, there there's you your ad. There it is. Um, I, Wait, I mean, you think I it's guess, a big deal, John? Uh, I mean, first off. I'm on the fence could, about it. Could I, I say something? I don't want to be the kind of politician that lies to people. I just don't, right? So if I'm asked a question, I did. You know, and I was in a perfect situation. Why not? I was in a legal state, right? I had a ride to and from, all right? It was like a community thing. It's not like... You know, I went in there with a whole bunch on me. I went in there and people were literally passing it around. It was a Grateful Dead show. I think, it, you know, to me, it seems like, you know, if you're a social drinker, is that better than being an alcoholic? Absolutely. I mean, if you're smoking marijuana because you're socially at a, you know, you're at a concert, you're doing this, you're doing that. I mean, it's legal in certain states. It was legal there. And if you want to do it, enjoy it. If I you didn't drive. Like it, don't do it. It's like if I went to the Cubs game and I drank a whole bunch of alcohol and I drove home, that would be illegal. More dangerous. I too. was driven. I was driven there. I was driven back. I had, it was a perfect situation. It was legal. It was acceptable. It was social. It was outside. It wasn't the freaking Annie. It wasn't, you know, <laughs> it wasn't the Chicago theater, you know. It was a perfect situation, and I participated. Yeah, I think, it, you know, it's like anything, right? We have, we, when we go to places and we go out with a bunch of friends, some people choose not to drink. You can choose not to smoke marijuana. You can choose to smoke marijuana as long as it's, it's legal where you're doing it. I don't, I don't love drinking. You know I that. know. I mean, it, it's just the, your I'll own drink. choice, right? I right. mean, you do what you want to do. And Everybody's as long it. as it's legal. And you're safe about it, and you're smart about it. Lindsay, you think it's a big deal what I just did? No. Thank you. You're no. younger. You're in the younger generation. I imagine you know a few people. I that mean, do you could have said that ten years ago, and I still would have been like, Meh. if I did, if I said it ten years ago, I'd <laughs> probably been, plus. I'd have been run out of town if I said that ten years ago, right? Because ten years ago was like I didn't. Inhale well, it was legal everywhere. I did inhale. That's what very... if you talk to a normal <laughs> yeah, if you talk to a normal inhale. politician. Yeah, it would have been right. illegal ten years ago. Yeah. But if you talk to a normal politician and they're like, "Have you ever smoked weed?" They'd be like, uh, "I did it a couple times in high school and I didn't like it." Or like Bill Clinton. Okay. Uh, I did it, but I didn't inhale. Well, I just wanted to be cool. Ages right? ago. Right. But what I'm saying is, ago. like, how often do you hear somebody being honest like I am? Yeah, I went to the Grateful Dead show at Wrigley Field and I smoked weed. No problem. Right. I mean. And by the way, I was driven there. I was driven home, right? I wasn't intoxicated. It was just like a social thing. It was lovely. It was a lovely two days and listening to the dead and company and just like enjoying ourselves and having fun. It was probably, well, you know, and you rarely get those weekends off. So that was kind of a, I had like a whole weekend off and I was like, for those of you that don't know, I love Grateful Dead and Dead and Company. Enjoy mayor. Well, anyway, I don't know if I just, Kevin, you know, you being campaign manager, you're going to have, I mean, it's, I, I like, I mean, I like the fact that we know that legalization marijuana is an issue. So why not, have, why not be able to talk about it and talk about it in a sense that like, look, this is my experience in other states where it's legal. Right. Let's talk about it. All right. Let's I, talk about I travel legalization to, of marijuana. I travel all over the United States and I see where it's legal and I see the people that own these dispensaries and I see the people that are working there and I see lines out the door and I see economic development taking place around this, these dispensaries. And it's like, we don't want, we don't want any part of that here in Indiana, right? It's a gateway drug. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. It's I, a I just, plant. It grows in the ground. It's so, it's hard for me to understand how, could you imagine if, you know, a hundred years ago we made like daisies illegal? Yeah. You know, or like, you know, oh, I, you got daisies. Oh man. You know, I hide mean, them. It, it's the like, cops are coming. You know, just like with, like I keep saying alcohol. I mean, it, it's, it's dangerous if it's used, if it's used the wrong way, you just have to be responsible about it. Here's what Chad is saying. Okay. Uh, I'm interested. Rick says, got my vote mayor now for sure. <laughs> uh, Doty. I, I should, I should announce this a long time ago. Doty <laughs> says not a big deal to us. Baby boomers. And Samantha says, 
The world is beautiful in all its majesty when you're high. Whoa. <laughs> and Dr. Foright said bravo. Yeah. Dr. Foright did? <laughs> yeah. I'm it's shocked my doc, that's that my doc. Foright would say wow. that. That's my doctor. Um, yeah. I also like the fact that Dodie said the first time she got high was at the Hammond Civic Center. Really? <laughs> That was a couple weeks ago in my fundraiser. (laughs) Eight days ago. She was up there with Dan the Tracker. Dan the Tracker smoking his cigarettes and Duddy was next to him, right? You think Dan the Tracker smokes weed? No. I say no. No? Big no. He smokes cigarettes, though. I saw him. He was illegally smoking cigarettes. But we let him go. We let him off. I I should have called the cops on him. Tased him. (laughs) Dan, sorry about tasing you, Dan the Tracker. For smoking in the Civic Center. Yeah. 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 Man. I don't know, man. I don't know if I screwed up or not, Kevin. Um, I don't think. I mean, I don't know why you're worried about it. Should I think at the end of the poll? day, it's just a yeah. Create a poll. It's just a. Does this make me more or less something, likely to be something. Even if you kind of screwed yeah. yourself over with this, you're still my dad. Uh, That's nice so of you. Sweet. What's the poll? And I'll always tolerate you. <laughs> <laughs> What's the poll question? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, did Mayor Tom mad. mess up? I gotta. I gotta call Marissa right after the show. Oh, yeah, <laughs> what? Hey, honey. Damage control. You did what? Yeah. But honestly, I don't want to be a liar. Okay. I don't want to like be that person that's running for office and fake. I just want to be honest and brutally honest. And when I see the cannabis industry and all these states that I visit and it's booming and I come over here to Indiana, I read an article in the paper this morning where three people got arrested for it. Well, that's it's it. like for it's a the, couple the, joints. It's like, are you insane? The decriminalization of it's important too. I mean, you've got so many people that were arrested for minor marijuana possession that now have it on the record. And it's something they have yeah. to worry about. And what do you think about try it? To what if they it? wanted to go to like, a great college. Yeah, go to and law they, uh, school. Oh, you got a marijuana charge on your record? Sorry, you're not going to be able to go to Notre Dame or the University of Chicago. You have a great stellar track record otherwise. Sorry, I can't do that if you have a crime against you, right? But if you're the same kid in a similar situation in Illinois and they catch you with a joint, they, just, they crush it on the ground and tell you to go on your, about your day. And yep. that kid could get into Northwestern or the University of Chicago or Notre Dame. It yep. just doesn't make – and by the way, I could tell you as a former public defender – the only people that are truly uh, penalized with these marijuana laws are the poor that can't hire lawyers and get out of this. Because mm-hmm. let's say, for instance, Tommy called up and said, Dad, I got bad news. I got a marijuana charge, right? I'd say, okay, Tommy, and I'd hire a lawyer, and that lawyer would do a good job for Tommy. They should probably name Kevin Chandler Smith. And that lawyer would do a good <laughs> job for Cantrell. Tommy. Right, or John Cantrell. But the lawyer would do a good job, probably get paid a $1,000, and then ultimately Tommy would end up in some type of program where the, pro- where the charge would fall off. And Tommy would be just yeah. fine. Yeah, right? so just to kind of give you a similar thing that I experienced when I was doing uh, public defender work in the federal courts, and that was that back in the day, they used to punish crack um, to the tune of about seven or eight times on the sentencing guidelines yeah. versus powder cocaine. Yeah, man. And guess what? Where was crack popular? Uh-huh. In, in poor, 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 and, poor and minority communities. Right. Where, where was, was powder cocaine, cocaine popular? Right. On Richard Wall Street. Ross, that's right. You know, so, I mean, it, it, it was ridiculous. And you I could have the same amount of regular cocaine and the same amount of crack, which is basically the same product, and you would get sentenced how much harsher for crack? Seven I want to say it was like worse. five to seven times. And here's the thing, though. Think about this. It was always by weight. Think about crack weight versus powder. Mm-hmm. Crack cocaine weighed more. So it was all by weight. You were getting screwed on the weight. Mm-hmm. It was terrible. Mm-hmm. They fixed it since I agree. then. But it was totally... Kevin, when I first started practicing, that was a huge issue. Yeah. And it was still happening. And, and it was the federal system that yeah, was doing it's that. federal right? system. Right. You guys. Yes, sir. Props to Luke on this. Mm-hmm. But this Luke. is this is season four, episode 20. Oh, oh my God. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. That is insane. 420. That is insane. How did that happen? <laughs> That is nuts. That's the name of the show. And that I, is nuts. Holy crap. That's wow. hilarious. 420. How did that happen? Oh that's my. so insane. That's <laughs> funny. That's crazy. By the way, the, the results Luke, are you in, rock. They for, are Luke rocks for that. And we should have said uh, Oh, said, my God. That is so crazy. <laughs> Kansas State. Manhattan, Kansas. That's nuts. Luke is the man, What are the dude. chances? Luke, you are the, you are the Lockpot fan of the day, Luke. Fan of the day for Episode sure. Episode 420. That's the name of the show, right, John? <laughs> that is the name of the show. The wow. poll results are in. Ninety-seven uh, percent say Tom's Senate chances are not hurt wow. by okay. admitting he smoked. Thank weed. you to Lock. Not hurt. Not listeners. hurt. Who is that three percent? Uh, I don't know. It's a single person, <laughs> it's a single. and it's, it's definitely Dan the tracker. not me. It's Dan the Tracker. <laughs> <laughs> it's Todd Young. Todd yes. Young. <laughs> Todd Young staff. <laughs> All right. Well, wrap it. All right. I gotta call my wife. <laughs> I gotta get the hell out of here. Dun, 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 oh boy, oh boy. Dun, dun, dun. We need California? like scary music. Yeah. Versus. Versus no, you know, the best. She loves me. 
regardless you of hope she <laughs> regardless of no you but by the way weed. the thing is I, I have a more liberal viewpoint than my wife does for sure because uh, i grew up in california marissa grew up in a family with a police officer for a father and, a, and a, uh, a teacher for her mother okay so like she grew up in a really nice family a really sort of strict on that and you know, I grew up in Northern California in sort of a hippie type of yeah, environment with a, single mom. <laughs> right? with a single mom in a hippie type of environment. So we see the world differently in that regard, for sure. So I hope my wife still loves me when I get up. I I, she of course, will. she will, by the way. Of course, she will. But she may be uh, tapping her foot. Or no something. more Grateful Dead shows for you. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Grateful Dead shows. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Wrap it. <sighs> Episode 420. 420 will not be forgotten. <laughs> no. I will not be forgotten by Mayor Tom. I can assure you that. But thanks to everybody for listening to LockPod. We do this every Tuesday and Friday. It's great to have the notorious LMP back in studio. It's uh, great whoop. to be here. We got uh, Jill coming back on Tuesday. So we're doing Tuesdays with Jill, Fridays with LMP. Uh, Kevin, the, the, the caboose, Coach uh, Chandler Smith, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Keeping, it, keeping it real. Jay Vez, awesome mm-hmm. job again. Thanks. And of course, is coming live from uh, Munster, Indiana. Uh, this is your locomotive and uh, Senate candidate that just, <laughs> <laughs> according to three percent of the people, just torpedoed, torpedoed his chance. So <laughs> yeah. just ripped John Mellencamp. Yeah. I did not rip John Mellencamp. I love John Mellencamp. <laughs> he just you. had a bad night that night. <laughs> there you go. We all Let's have bad that. nights. Love yeah. you, John Mellencamp. Take care, everybody. See you on Tuesday.